Do you dream of success in business, a global lifestyle, or securing a bright future for your family? Dominica's Citizenship by Investment is the path to fulfill your dreams. Access increased global mobility with visa-free travel. Explore new business opportunities. Offer your family a secure and comfortable future. Unleash your potential with Dominica's Citizenship by Investment. With this, I would like to welcome you again to this webinar titled Planning Your Family's Future with Citizenship by Investment in Dominica, an initiative by economictimes.com by Times of India, sponsored by CS Global Partners. For this, today we have with us Dr. The Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Dr. The Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt is a Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. He has been leading this country since 2004 when at the age of 31, he set a world record of being the world's youngest head of government. He is a strong supporter of his country's Citizenship by Investment program through which he is realizing Dominica's ambition of becoming the world's first ever climate resilient nation. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure, mate. Next, we have with us His Excellency Emmanuel Nanthan, Head of Dominica's Citizenship by Investment Unit, a position he has held since 2015. With years of experience in diplomatic and international affairs, His Excellency Emmanuel Nanthan also acts as the ambassador at large for Dr. The Honorable Rosewell Skerritt, Prime Minister of Dominica. Welcome, Ambassador. Good evening to you. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, it's my pleasure being here with you. It's always good to talk to the kind people of India. And we have with us Micah Emmett, CEO of CS Global Partners, a world-leading legal advisory that specializes in intelligent citizenship issues. A dual qualified attorney in South Africa and the United Kingdom, Micah has years of practice in the fields of citizenship, residence, immigration, and foreign investment law. Micah, I can't wait to find out how all the listeners can benefit from your experience. Welcome. Thank you very much for hosting us here today. And I'd just like to make a special um, thank you on behalf of CS Global Partners that the Honorable Prime Minister and His Excellency could join us today for the webinar. With no further delay, let's kickstart this discussion. Micah, nowadays we hear the phrase global citizen a lot. What does it mean and how can a person from India become a global citizen? Well, I think being a global citizen transcends geography and borders. So a global citizen essentially embodies and identifies with global perspectives, celebrates cultural diversity, and tends to generally broaden their economic footprint beyond their home country. So the concept of global citizenship over the years has been closely related to the concept of citizenship by investment, because economic citizenship is probably one of the main and um, most pr progressive tools to achieving the special status. In respect of Indian nationals, um, Indian nationals are quite active on the global stage. However, as governments become more insular and they impose stricter visa controls, the opportunity to travel and be global and do business globally is considerably hampered. So CBI, Citizenship by Investment, is a wonderful way to reverse that as it gives the Indian national um, better access to travel and business opportunities. Next, we have Dr. The Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. For those who may not have heard of the Commonwealth of Dominica, can you tell us a little bit about your country? Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure being on your uh, program. The Commonwealth of Dominica is an island in the heart of the Caribbean Sea, uh, the chain of islands in the Eastern Caribbean, with a population of about 72,000 inhabitants. Uh, we are a member of the Commonwealth. Uh, so we have excellent relations with India. We also have excellent relations with the United Kingdom. Uh, and of course, um, entry uh, and attending universities in the United Kingdom is, is always uh, facilitated by the UK authorities there. Um, and, and so you can, in fact, 
travel from Dominica or if a Dominican passport to the United Kingdom without any visa requirement. We're also a respected member of the United Nations. Um, and uh, we are a member of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, which is a grouping of, of Caribbean states. Uh, we, we are a law-abiding um, country. We, we are um, established on the rule of law. And Dominica is a very peaceful country. It's a very welcoming country. English is our first language. Uh, we do speak a, a French Creole because of our um, connections with the with, with, with France and the and the French territories uh, in the Caribbean. So Dominica is is a place of of um, longevity. We have uh, per capita uh, largest number of centenarians, um, of, of, obviously because of our lifestyle our organic lifestyle which we uh, promote in, in our country. Uh, so it is a place that is welcoming and a um, respecter of, of the rule of law and, and respect of people's right to property and the free movement of individuals. We, we also have excellent relations with the United States and, and Canada, or some of our closest um, neighbors in, in, in the north of the Caribbean, but we are an independent country. Uh, we gained our independence from the United Kingdom in 1978. Uh, incidentally, we'll be celebrating on the 3rd of November our 42nd anniversary of our independence. One of the key drivers of the Commonwealth of Dominica's economy is tourism. What makes your nation so attractive to foreigners? We have branded ourselves and we, we have um, come to be known as the Nature Isle, not only of the Caribbean, yeah. but of the world. Uh, because we uh, build our tourism industry on the preservation, the conservation, and the protection of the environment. Uh, as a result of this, we have received a number of international accolades from Condé Nast, um, um, declaring Dominica as, the, as one of the best destinations in the world. We, have, um, we are in the top five of, of, of scuba diving. Uh, we promote whale watching as a tourist attraction, uh, we have um, natural flora and fauna. We have the, all the world's um, uh, second largest um, natural um, boiling lakes because we, we also uh, a volcanic um, territory. We have uh, 365 rivers in our country, uh, waterfalls, hot springs, uh, and also all our tourists, all our hotels, for example, are, are built around the preservation and the conservation of the environment. And uh, we have seen the expansion of our tourism industry, and we have seen um, greater interest by discerning um, tourists and visitors to our country uh, who would like to get away from the hustle and the bustle of, of, of their work environment and the countries where they reside. We have also been uh, attracting international brands. We have Europe's oldest um, brand um, of hotels, um, Kempinski Hotel uh, in Dominica. Uh, we have a Marriott Hotel under construction. It should be completed uh, um, next year. Also Hilton and, and a number of other brands that are showing interest in Dominica. All of these hotels that I've mentioned are um, approved projects under the citizenship by investment program. The other very important thing is that we are a safe country. As prime minister, I can walk the streets with no need to have any security. I, I could drive the streets, no need to have any security. Um, and likewise, any um, citizen or any visitor to our country. We have a very good uh, health system. So if, if a tourist were to uh, get himself in any health challenge, we can provide the medical services uh, to, to this particular visitor. If you're looking for a place to rejuvenate, a place to... to um, uh, find yourself again, so to speak, uh, a, a place to, to enjoy nature, uh, a place to enjoy tranquility, a country where the rule of law is, is, is recognized, a country where it, that is safe, um, we can certainly, Dominica is certainly the place to come. And just to give an example, my dear, uh, with COVID-19, you know, the world um, is confronting this pandemic for the last nine months or so. We have had very few cases in Dominica but very importantly, we have had no deaths so, so, um, so far. And, um, and this is because of a very robust primary healthcare system and also a very robust um, secondary and, and tertiary healthcare um, system. 
um, for a small country like ours, uh, not to have had any deaths with regards to COVID-19 is no doubt a, a huge achievement for our health system and, and the leadership of our health system in Dominica. The Commonwealth of Dominica is home to one of the world's most long-standing and popular citizenship by investment programs. What was the country's rationale for adopting its citizenship by investment program? We established the uh, citizenship by investment program in 1993. Uh, so it's a very long time now. And, and this was done for a number of reasons, um, some of which is one, to boost our foreign direct investment, um, to expand our then growing uh, economy, and also to ensuring that we, we, we meet the demands of a very competitive world. I mean, you have a, a number of talented, resourceful, uh, intelligent um, global citizens in, in various countries uh, who want to have the the opportunity to take advantage of, of opportunities which exist elsewhere other than in their country. Because the world now is a global village. Uh, mobility is, is very important for some people. But there are countries where travel restrictions are placed with regards to visas, uh, et cetera. And Dominica affords um, the global citizens the opportunity to, to have um, a, a Dominican citizenship and allow him or her and his family to move freely. Um, this will also allow um, access to education opportunities. Um, and one of the things that we also recognize, you know, besides the foreign investments which come into a country, as a small nation, a member of the United Nations, we see this as our contribution to humanity, um, affording uh, citizens uh, of other countries, the opportunity uh, to be a citizen of our country and, uh, and, and, and providing that family with a greater sense of security um, to, to ensure that opportunities for the children are better assured. And I, I know India very well. India is a wonderful country. Uh, Dominican India have enjoyed exceptional relationships since 1978. Uh, we have had many um, cooperation agreements in, in, in a number of fields, and we continue to strengthen and deepen our bilateral relations with, with India. And, and, and so we, we are there to offer this uh, opportunity to, to um, discerning citizens uh, to become a citizen of Dominica. And, um, and we open, we do so with open arms. Obviously, there is a very robust due diligence process because we have to ensure we protect ourselves as a nation and we also protect um, the applicant who is applying to become a citizen of Dominica and to give him the assurance as well that he is applying to become a citizen of a country that respects international law, which, which, which um, respects international norms and practices, and which is a law-abiding country uh, as part of the global architecture. His Excellency, for the benefit of our listeners who are unfamiliar with the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program, can you describe uh, the investment options that would qualify a person for citizenship? There are two investment options under the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program. First, there is a, a direct government fund, uh, which is normally referred to as the EDF, where an applicant can uh, apply, pay a one-time uh, $100,000 used by the government for national okay. development and become citizen. Or secondly, uh, an applicant can invest in a pre-approved real estate. And uh, once that application is done and we go through due diligence, that person would qualify and become a citizen as well. The latest edition of the CBI Index recently ranked Dominica as the world's best citizenship by investment program for the fourth consecutive year. How does Dominica retain this title year after year? Well, firstly, the impressive, the competitive threshold that we have is... Uh, had to bid. Basically, someone can invest and become a citizen for $100,000 uh, US dollars, that is if you go to the direct government investment, or $200,000 uh, for a real estate. So it's difficult to beat that competitive threshold. But secondly, the Dominica program uh, is straightforward and is accessible. Information is related to us uh, through agents and who go through the files themselves and ensure that all the information that are required are submitted to us. Our website is updated uh, on a consistent basis, and therefore the agents and even the applicants can get information from uh, that area as well. 
We don't require any applicant to pass a language or a knowledge test of Dominica. You don't have to travel to Dominica. You don't have to fulfill uh, any pre-mandatory residence requirement uh, either. Thirdly, we are keen to include family members. We are a family-friendly program where an applicant can include uh, your, your spouse, your children, your parents, uh, the parents of your spouse, and even your siblings uh, once they are under 25 and uh, with an unmarried and without children. Uh, fourthly, really, we provide a very strong product, a product that the industry knows. Since you have investment have been around for a while, and in Dominica, we have had this program for the past 27 years. So clients and agents know our program. They know people who became citizens of Dominica, who have passed it on to their children and their grandchildren. So we are a program that's very well known by the industry, and that makes it very simple for us. Last but by no means least is, of course, our commitment to due diligence. We have a very strong due diligence process that is multi-layered. It includes uh, vetting our names through intelligence uh, organizations. It includes having the best due diligence firms around the world doing on the ground, boots on the ground uh, checks on every applicant. It includes vetting by our office, by our staff, who are themselves well-trained uh, in doing that. So here we are, a program that has been around, a program that's family friendly, a program that is easy to access, a program with a threshold that uh, is unbeatable and, uh, and unmatched, really. So I think for those reasons, we have been recognized as the best program in the world for the fourth consecutive year. What does it mean to be committed to due diligence? Dominica implements a due diligence process that is exhaustive and that involves many layers. It ranges from internal screening by our unit staff. Uh, it, it includes, it includes uh, letting our agent do checks on, on the clients as well. Basically, we have four tiers of due diligence. We don't accept the applicants directly uh, to us. You must go through an agent. The agent, in, in turn, must submit to us a know your client uh, form that they know the person and have interfered with the person and, and provide to us as well uh, a whole check on, on every applicant. Then we send our information to our, our intelligence unit who verify with background checks on international organizations. They do that. Then we use the best due diligence firms around the world to ensure that the person who is applying is who exactly he or she uh, is. They will check on at your home, the industry where you work, the school where you went to, the community where you live, and provide us with boots on the ground intelligence on, on the individual. We believe that for us, we have a commitment to the international world to ensure that the people who are given citizenship in Dominica themselves are deserving of doing so and that no crooks fall through the cracks. Shifting our focus again to uh, the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt. Obtaining citizenship of another country can be an emotional decision for some. It is certainly an important decision. Could you expand on why you think investors should look to the Commonwealth of Dominica for an alternative citizenship? Our program has stood the test of time. Uh, we have been in existence, as I said earlier, since 1993. We have been subjected to international scrutiny by independent um, entities. We have been recognized as the best uh, citizenship by investment program globally. When it's, once you become a citizen of Dominica, so if my friends from my brothers and sisters from, from India uh, were to apply to become Dominican citizens, um, they are successful they can in fact pass on Dominican citizenship to their offsprings, to the children yet to be born. Um, and this in large measure differentiates because this is about for us about family, about keeping families together yeah. and, and, and letting you know as a new citizen of our country that really this is not a second class citizen. This is not a different category of citizen. The, the use of the term economic citizenship is ready to, de, to define the program, but not to define the citizen. Um, so, so once you become a citizen of Dominica, you are, you are not considered to be an economic citizen of Dominica. You are considered to be a citizen of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And, and that citizenship is protected by our constitution and by laws passed in our parliament. So it cannot be arbitrarily taken away from you. There are certain grounds under which the citizenship can be revoked, one of which is if you provided false information during your application process. And as I said today, to also, you can also be a dual citizen. Our laws, our constitution 
um, recognizes um, recognize uh, dual citizenship, and and so you can maintain dual citizenship. You have also a country, as I said, that that is um, built on the rule of law. Um, your prop you have a right to own property in Dominica. That property is protected by the provisions in our constitution. The state cannot expropriate your property, you cannot nationalize your property. Um, and if the state were to uh, acquire property, it must compensate you uh, with market value. Uh, you have access to a robust healthcare system. Our literacy rate in Dominica is 96%. Uh, our, every child in Dominica has access to primary education, uh, secondary education, and tertiary education. We have 100% access uh, to these layers of education in our country, and education in Dominica is free to all our citizens. Um, and, and also, to this is a peaceful country. This is a safe country. And in a world of so many um, challenges and, 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 and so many insecurities, Dominica, I believe, and I'm not saying so sincerely, not saying so because I'm the prime minister of the country, because it is a fact that Dominica is the safest country in the world. And, and um, we have a stable political system. Uh, we have, though we are, we are a young democracy, but we are also a mature democracy. Um, and there are many things which um, countries could look to us as a small nation to in terms of good practices. And, and also very importantly, we have been at the vanguard of, um, of speaking about the effects of climate change and the way that climate change has, is impacting our lives and livelihoods um, globally in all our countries, uh, especially in the developing world. And, and, and so, um, and of course, in regards to mobility, your, your, your ease of travel, Dominica is an internationally respected country. Uh, as we speak now, you can travel to 140 countries. The UN has 192 countries, so you can travel to 140 countries without requiring a visa. And by 2021, we intend to increase this uh, to at least 160 countries. And in the next few years, hoping that we can get um, close to the to the one to the 192 uh, as as close as possible. But notwithstanding the countries where you need visas, Dominicans are not denied visa, visa applications to the countries where we need visas and so visas to travel. So uh, your ability to move around the world um, is better assured uh, with a Dominican citizenship. And, and I mean, these are just a few reasons why you, know, you should uh, apply to become a Dominican citizen. And as, as I've said before, for us, we appreciate the investments. We appreciate the foreign direct investment that's coming in, but from an ideological and philosophical standpoint, we see this also as making our small contribution uh, to um, humanity, to providing um, comfort of the mind to so many families that are concerned about tomorrow and the future, and, and giving families an added opportunity to explore um, their dreams and aspirations. And, and also to, um, in respect to investments, you can invest in Dominica um, and be subjected to a wide range of, of, of concessions and, and um, incentives to do so. You have spoken about business opportunities in your country. Could you please elaborate on the opportunities available? Well, a number of opportunities. Um, first of all, we have an economic partnership agreement with the European Union, which allows a, a wide range of concessions uh, to, to um, export to the European Union uh, with no tariffs imposed on it. So you have, we have duty-free access to the European markets. And also Dominica is part of um, the Caribbean community and the, and the, and the um, free movement of goods. So any item that is manufactured in Dominica has duty-free access, uh, unrestricted, unrestricted access to the rest of the Caribbean region. We also have a special trading arrangement with the United States of America, which allow, allows for 
um, certain goods and services to have duty-free access to the entire American market. There are opportunities in Dominica for manufacturing. Um, there are opportunities in, in Dominica in construction. There are opportunities in Dominica for agriculture and agricultural expansion and, and using innovation and technology in agriculture. Um, there are opportunities in tourism, uh, hotel construction, the construction of villas um, in, in Dominica. So it's, and of course, you are subjected and you have the opportunity to benefit from, as I said, a wide range of concessions. So we have the value added tax, um, but part of the concession regime, you would be exempted from paying the value added tax on the importation of your raw material, your machinery, your equipment. Uh, we allow for the repatriation of your profits and dividends. There, there are no restrictions um, on the repatriation of your dividends or um, your profits. We also respect in our constitution your right to property. And, and I said earlier, the state cannot expropriate your property. It cannot nationalize your property without due compensation. Um, and of course, we, um, we are safe country that indicated. Um, and another important thing is that we do not have any death tax in Dominic. So, so if God forbid, you know, a member of your family would pass and they would have uh, bequeathed to you um, properties, the state would not interfere in this process. There, there, there are no taxes imposed on this. And we do not tax your global income. You know, we want everybody to be as rich as possible. Um, and this is not a government that that um, goes after people's global income, uh, you know. So, so, so the number of reasons that 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 um why I believe that you, you invest in Dominica um, is ideal, and Dominica is is really suited um, for any discerning investor. Uh, and so we look forward to to our, our dear friends, uh, whom we've had such a long-standing and mutually beneficial relationship. A, a country which I have various admiration for and the leadership of the country. Are there any restrictions on new citizens in terms of running a business or making investments in the Commonwealth of Dominica? We have zero restrictions, none. Um, mm -hmm. This is a free market economy and we, we respect all the tenets and the principles of a free market economy. Um, once you are a citizen or even, even if you're not a citizen, we welcome you. We're not only welcoming applications to become citizens of Dominica. Um, if you want to invest in Dominica, you are, you'll be given the same kind of respect, the same kind of treatment. The laws will protect your investments. The, the laws will protect your properties. So it's not only for citizens, but for non-citizens as well, um, who can invest in a, in a wide range of, of areas. So there are no restrictions whatsoever on the ownership of businesses. Um, and the... Uh, there are absolutely no restrictions on the owning of properties um, at all, whatsoever. You, you can transact with your properties as you wish and as the market forces um, determine. We would now like to procure some more information from Emmanuel Manthen. Industry stakeholders have observed a shift in investor priorities since the onset of COVID-19. What can Dominica's Citizenship by Investment Program offer investors in a post-pandemic world? COVID-19 has highlighted the, the need for families to stay together. We felt that as a program, we, we wanted to look at what we could do to help in, uh, in the program. And therefore, we allow applicants under the program to be able to include their spouse, to include minors, to, uh, adult children up to the age of 30. You could in include your parents or grandparents. You could also include siblings subject to the fulfillment of certain conditions. What makes Dominica stand out from the crowd is that the fact that any dependent can be related to either the main applicant or can be uh, related to the spouse of the main applicant. No age restriction is, is in place for um, your parents or your grandparents. Dominica is the only country that allows spouse of qualifying parents and grandparents to be included in our, in our application. Dominica is one of the only three countries that allow siblings to be added uh, in our, our program right in Dominica. On real estates, in addition to family reunification, the citizenship investment program also provides the opportunity to purchase real estates in a safe haven in a country that is growing with, with a very good economic growth uh, for the past three years for a minimum investment of $200,000 US. In Dominica, 
at present we have eight projects that have been uh, approved as real estate programs for people to invest in and become citizens of Dominica. One is the Anishi Resort and Spa. That is a Marriott autograph collection or product hotel. Marriott is the world's largest hotel chain and they are building one of the highest level of the chain in, right here in Dominica and are already committed to doing a second one in Dominica under the program as well. Then we have uh, Cabbage Resort and Spa Kempinski, Europe's oldest hotel chain. They have already uh, been opened, they have sold out, and they have an approved project. We also have Boacotelet, which is a, a local uh, product being done in, in a very uh, historic part of Dominica. Then we have uh, also Jungle Bay Villas, another hotel chain that is private, very high-end, high-chain hotel that's been that is, uh, being done, a local grown product that has been done in Dominica. We have Tranquility Beach Resort. Tranquility Beach is a product of Hilton, and they're also building a hotel here in Dominica, progressing quite, quite nicely. The villas at Secret Bay have been conducted under the program as well. This is another high-end product hotel that have won a number of, of awards for, for a number of years. They are open at present, but they're expanding and doing this under the program. So really and truly, uh, we have a number of, of products that we offer to stakeholders. They are private sector hotels. They are owned by the investors. The government does not own shares. But because we deem uh, the tourism sector and the hotel chain development as vital for Dominica's tourism expansion, we allow investors to invest in the hotel chains and also become citizens of Dominica. Timbo's apartment as well uh, is also one of the products that we have that is approved in Dominica. So real estate in Dominica, the, the, the investor must only hold his investment, he must hold his investment to qualify for a minimum of three years. If you hold uh, investment for five years and he sells those investments, anyone who purchases from him themselves will qualify to be a citizen of Dominica once they go through and pass this, the rigorous due diligence checks. In addition to the changes for main applicants and their families, the Commonwealth of Dominica also introduced new rules for post-citizenship additions. What are these rules and how do they benefit those who apply under the program? Our post-citizenship addition regime affects people who are already citizens of Dominica by virtue of the program. For people who apply as a main applicant, it allows them to share citizenship with their family members who is dependent now and who was the dependent at the time of application. This encourages the first, in the first year, the applicant could add uh, with minimal uh, cost, additional cost, the person could add, there's a grace period, that allows someone to add the family members as time go along. If you do it after a year, then there's a fee that is charged uh, for that. For anyone who applies and becomes a citizen through the program, whether a main applicant or a dependent at the time of the original application, it's also possible to apply for a newborn child for a minimum fee of really five hundred dollars, but that's done for processing. Uh, but you could do that. You could also add your new spouse for a fee of around seventy-five thousand dollars. Shifting our focus again to uh, the Honourable Prime Minister, which sectors are currently experiencing growth in the Commonwealth of Dominica? There are a number of sectors experiencing growth um, in, in agriculture, in construction, in energy. We are pursuing vigorously. Um, green energy, renewable energy. Uh, we are working uh, geothermal. Uh, we are in the process of constructing a geothermal plant, uh, which will be the first in the Caribbean region uh, that will supply a significant um, portion of our energy needs. And, and the second phase of that project will be uh, a larger plant that will allow for export uh, to two of our neighboring uh, French territories of Guadeloupe and Martinique. Uh, tourism, um, at the beginning of the year, um, they, they started to do very well. Obviously, COVID-19 has impacted it, um, but it was projected, and, and based on our bookings, um, our hotels would be in, in, in the 90s in terms of occupancy. Um, but there, is, there are opportunities there. We, we, we accept that this is a difficult period of tourism, but uh, we will overcome this, this particular challenge. The hope is that we can get back to, to, to be normal. Also, there are opportunities in, in water resources. Um, we, we are known for natural spring water, uh, fresh water, uh, drinkable water, and there are opportunities there for the export of both bulk and bottled water. And of course, the government has a wide range of concessions 
um, in these areas. The other areas that the opportunities are in manufacturing. And, and I know um, India is, is, is well known for this um, in terms of its um, manufacturing and so forth. So there are opportunities in, in there for, for uh, manufacturing. Also in health, because Dominica is, is, is known as the nature isle, because of our, of our pristine and serene um, environment, because of our decades of protecting and preserving and conserving the environment, and, and because of, of the, of the um, natural attributes that we have in terms of our, our freshness of, of the air, our rivers, our lakes, our hot springs, um, health, health and wellness is a major area of, of potential and existing um, and growth. Um, and telemedicine is an, is an area which we often, of, of course, um, we have had excellent relationship with India in the area of medicine. Um, there are some of our Dominicans who actually studied at um, Indian medical universities and who are here as medical doctors. As a matter of fact, our current Minister for Health um, studied in, in India. Um, he attended the, uh, a medical university in India um, and he's currently our Minister for Health. And, and so we're looking to even strengthen um, that existing relationship with the government of India in the area of healthcare. So there, there, are, there are a wide range of opportunities um, where there are existing growth and potential growth for investments. The Commonwealth of Dominica reopened its borders to international travel in August and a little before some other island nations in the Caribbean. What is the significance of travel to Dominicans? We adopted a, a, a sort of um, a responsible approach to the management of COVID-19. Uh, and even during the peak periods of COVID-19, we never really fully closed our economy. Uh, we allowed a number of activities to um, take place. Construction was allowed. Uh, you could have access to supermarkets. Um, you could have had access to, to public transportation, obviously, with um, certain guidelines and protocols. Our, our cargo ports will never have never been closed throughout the pandemic. And we have seen limited numbers. And the numbers that we've had, as I said, we have um, we, we were able to provide adequate facilities to, to, to treat, uh, to, first of all, to test and to treat um, persons who were tested positive. Um, and this is why we were able to open to visitors very early. We reopened our, our borders to visitors uh, in the first week of August of this year. There have been no real challenges here whatsoever at all. Um, and we have even gone further and we have defined what we, what we term a safe tourism path. Um, so tourists could come into a country and not be quarantined or isolated in a hotel room. They could go out to the, in the public and, and enjoy the natural beauty of our country, go to the beaches, go to the rivers, go to the lakes, um, go hiking. Um, so we have been able to, to craft um, very cleverly and responsibly uh, a particular pathway to allow tourists to come in and once they come in to be able to enjoy uh, in, a, in a safe manner um, both to protect themselves and to protect our, our, our residents um, from COVID-19. And so a number of countries have learned from us um, because we're among the first to, to reopen our borders um, to tourists and visitors and uh, because we recognize that, look, uh, many countries have engaged themselves in lockdowns, in curfews, um, in restrictions, and people want to breathe. People want to exhale. And, and we believe that we have an ideal um, product, um, especially in these times, if you're looking to, to release and relieve yourself of the stresses of COVID-19. Um, and Dominica is, is, is indeed the ideal place to, to come in. We welcome in. We, we are there to the World Health Organization protocols. Obviously, we have adapted some of them to our own uh, situation in Dominica. But we have a robust health system. Uh, we have adequate staff um, to provide medical care to anybody who would be affected. Um, and so far, it has been working very well. There are no intentions on our part to shut down the country or to go into any form of lockdown whatsoever. The economy uh, is fully has, has been fully reopened. We have students in, in schools. We are the first Caribbean country uh, which allowed students to go back to the classroom physically, uh, not online classroom, 
in the classroom, sitting on, 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 on the desk. Um, and our schools uh, will reopen on the first week of September of this year. Uh, so every church, every child in primary, in secondary, in tertiary, in early childhood institutions, they all at school. Obviously, we have placed some very robust um, protocols and guidelines for teachers, for uh, the buses, which, which um, transport the students, the parents, uh, the students themselves. Um, and thank God so far, we have had no incident whatsoever. It's, it's working very, very, very well for us. Um, and we have been able to share some of our, of our practices and policies in that regard to our brothers and sisters in the wider Caribbean. Micah, how can a citizenship of a different nation be obtained? In terms of um, citizenship by investment specifically, in the past 10 years, it's become quite a popular way of obtaining citizenship um, and growing popularity due to the ease of process. Um, citizenship by investment, also referred to as CBI or economic citizenship, is the process where one obtains citizenship by making a substantial financial investment into a country. And there are only a handful of countries in the world that offer a legitimate um, program. And Dominica is one of those, um, probably one of the most prestigious citizenship by investment programs in the world. Can you walk us through an example of why an Indian national would want to quickly obtain a different citizenship by investing in the Commonwealth of Dominica? Of course. Well, I mean, we've heard from... Um, you know, the Prime Minister um, and Ambassador Nanthan, you know, the reasons um, and the platform of why Dominica is um, so popular. Uh, over the years, I've helped a number of Indian businessmen. So, for example, you know, I'll draw an example of a typical um, applicant, a young upcoming entrepreneur in the technology industry with businesses all around the world. You know, they're setting up companies in Europe and the UK. They're selling their technology um, in Singapore and Hong Kong, but they tend to always get unstuck with the laborious and expensive process um, applying for visa after visa. Um, so the real question here to the listeners is, what is the real opportunity cost of being denied a visa or being delayed in getting your visa and missing out on that critical deal or whatever, whatever other, um, you know, opportunity costs that come along with, you know, not being able to have that freedom of access. So I truly believe that obtaining um, citizenship from Dominica is life changing. I mean, I have my clients call me um, after a few months from re receiving their documents to say thank you for transforming their lives. Um, and it's not just from a business perspective, but also personally, as we've heard, Dominica is very inclusive, including a wide range of family members. So we see that, um, you know, the spouse can go and visit the children who are at university or boarding school uh, abroad, or parents can travel to Singapore for um, ease of access to, you know, top medical facilities there. So with a visa free to over 75% of the world's countries, Dominica opens up doors for businessmen and their families. Those Indians who become citizens of the Commonwealth of Dominica must give up their Indian citizenship under the Indian law. What can they do to retain a strong connection with India? So there's a practical and a philosophical answer to this question. Um, in practice, my clients tend to apply for the OCI card, which is the Overseas Citizen of Indian card, which provides a lifelong right to travel and stay in India without limitation. The process is seamless uh, with an online application taking a few months. Philosophically, I think that's a different question because the decision to change one's document does not change one's identity um, and certainly doesn't override one's loyalty to one's roots. So I think in conclusion, you know, in a globalized world, smart businessmen understand that the decision to obtain an alternative citizenship is a lifelong opportunity that can be passed on from generation to generation. Just as a closing note, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, would you like to add something to this discussion for the Indian citizens? Well, I want to thank you very much, uh, the Economic Times of India, for facilitating this interview. It's my pleasure. And I look forward to um, doing so again. Uh, I want to wish uh, 
your country well as we continue to to fight this this pandemic and the economic fallout that it has created for for all of us in this world we believe that we can overcome this challenge through multilateralism and and india is known for this um for this level of cooperation and also to recognize the extraordinary efforts of cs global cs global is a very treasured partner of dominica in regards to the cbi the professional individuals uh, with a wide um, range of, of skill sets uh, that are relevant to, to this industry and the guidance that they have continued to provide to us um, it, it has been exceptional in, in ensuring that our program remains the number one program in the world and uh, we maintain a very robust due diligence process. So I want to thank all of you and have a wonderful evening. Ambassador, sir, would you like to add something? I think, thank you very much for having us. The Prime Minister has extended uh, adequate uh, thanks on our behalf to you uh, and the people of India and CS Global for a very good program. Thank you for having us. We look forward to working together in the future. Thank you. Micah, any last thoughts? Well, firstly, I would like to extend an extra heartfelt thank you um, to the Prime Minister and to Ambassador Nanthan. Um, it's very early in the morning there in Dominica. Um, so we're very grateful that they're able to join us. Um, to the nationals of India, you know, all I can say from a personal point of view, the moment I stepped on Dominica, I fell very much in love with the country. It is truly one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited um, and certainly felt very welcome. So. I would um, invite all your listeners to um, explore more about this opportunity. So thank you very much. With this, we have come to an end of this discussion. I would like to thank Honorable Prime Minister Roswell Skerritt for taking our time from his busy schedule this morning in Dominica and sharing his intuitive thoughts on planning your family's future with citizenship by investing in Dominica. We were also honored to have with us Emmanuel Nanthan as he delved deep into explaining the various distinctions of the program and how it could be a profit venture. Last but not the least, we are grateful to Micah Emmett, CEO of CS Global Partners, for briefing us about the concept of being a global citizen and what procedures Indians need to follow. Thank you so much, all of you, and thank you for listening. Goodbye.